said to refresh. MRSJ the mermaid. Okay. Said, fixed with refresh. All right, yeah, I just restarted and started up again. Here we go, go, go. Boom to the moon. Boom, boom, boom. How about that stock market? She knows. She knows. He knows. He knows. I knows. I knows. Countryman, he knows. He knows. Mrs. J, she knows. She knows. <laughs> Mr. G knows. Mrs. J knows. And Countryman knows. Cody don't knows. <laughs> Cody don't knows. Okay. So continuing on. Uh, so that was some fun facts about Vermont. Wasn't that so fun? I mean, <laughs> right? I mean, seriously. No, seriously. Uh, that was some fun facts about Vermont. I put a picture of Bernie Sanders up because he's a senator from Vermont. How does he have so much clout? Vermont has three electoral votes. I don't know. I guess, you know, you stick around long enough then uh, you, you become, get to become president. Look at Joe Biden, right? He's been in, Biden's been in politics for 50 years almost. Like, like 48 and a half years. 50 years that guy's been in Washington, D.C. Sheesh. Okay, but this isn't Politics 101, is this? No, this is all about Vermont. So next up, we're going to learn about uh, some special foods in Vermont. Mmm, have you guys had lunch today? I haven't, but I'm not that hungry anyway. So so let's watch the food about Vermont, and maybe I will uh, get hungry, huh? All right, so uh, up next, guys, we're going to look at some wonderful, wonderful foods of Vermont. And first up, the lovely Bernie Sanders. Hey, Bernie. Hey, I'm Bernie Sanders. Oh, I got ripped off. Huh? Yep, you did, Bernie. You really did. All right, first up, famous Vermont food is apple pie with cheddar cheese. Who here has had apple pie with cheddar cheese? I, I never even considered it. But, but what do we know about that? I mean, th I mean somebody's got to be That's eating this, not. right? It says, I've actually never heard of it, no. Well, well, it says here on the foodnetwork.com, uh, like many Vermonters, I guess somebody from Vermont is called a Vermonter. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, like many Vermonters, multi-generation apple orchidist, I guess somebody that uh, works on an apple orchard is called an apple orchidist. Ray Allen believes apple pie without the cheese is like a hug without the squeeze. And Allen knows apple pie. The Allen Home Farm Apple Orchard in South Hero has been in his family since 1870, and he's prepared the first flaky crust for each of the first 2,000 plus pies annually sold at the orchard since 1990. When his wife dared him to perfect a pie recipe, New Englanders also believe in pie for breakfast. Yeah, who doesn't? And at 80 degrees, Alan has sure earned his slice. Or at 80 years old, excuse me, Alan has earned his slice. So yeah, pie for breakfast, that's what they talk about in Pulp Fiction. She's like, always have pie for breakfast. All right, up next, famous Vermont food, chicken pot pie. In most places, chicken pot pie is littered with a pastry crust. But Vermonters top their chicken gravy and vegetables with quite a bit of biscuits. To try the authentic version, your best bet is booking a seat early at a chicken pie supper like the one held every October at the Richmond Congressional Church, going strong for 70 years. On the restaurant side, head to Penny Clues Cafe, a beloved Burlington destination for eclectic comfort food since 1998, and order the chicken and biscuits served over supremely flaky buttermilk biscuits. Okay, up next we have aged cheddar. Now this uh, sounds a lot better than it looks, in my opinion. 
but uh, aged cheddar. This is what it looks like here. It sounds good, but um, I don't know why it's uh, dripping on the sides there. Uh, aged cheddar. Vermont cheddar has been recognized as among the best in the entire world. At Cabot Creamery, Grafton Village, and Shelbourne Farms. Like a poutine, yeah. Said, so good. Sample and watch the process. For top notch grilled cheese, try the seasonal cart at Shelbourne Farms Historic Farm Bon, or head to the MKT Cafe in the Grafton for a daily grilled cheese like the three year cheddar apples and ham. Wow. A three year cheddar apples and ham grilled cheese. That sounds pretty good. The iconic Vermont Country Store in Weston has a huge traditional general, general store wheel of cheddar and serves creamy mac and cheese next door at the restaurant. Prohibition Pig in Waterbury is known for creative mac and cheese, but the basic made with Cabo cloth bound need no adornment. All right, up next is a, a popular dish around the United States, and that's uh, chili dogs. So I didn't know that they ate chili dogs all the way up in Vermont, uh, but apparently it's uh, pretty popular there. So uh, whether you call them Michigan's Red Hots, Coney Island, or Texas dogs, hot dogs topped with a finely ground meat chili, chopped raw onions, and a little yellow mustard are as beloved by Vermonters as if they came from the Green Mountain State. During warm weather, seasonal snack bars like Brigante Snack Bar in Colchester and Beansy's Bus in Burlington are favorites. At Handy's Lunch, a third generation Burlington icon in its own right, they call it a Texas dog and it's available year round. The bun is griddled buttery crisp on the outside, the hot dog snaps under your teeth, and the chili recipe is a family secret. Hmm, that looks pretty good. So up next we have, uh, everybody's had a chili dog, but not many of you have probably had this uh, famous Vermont dish, Fiddleheads. I bought. So Vermonters know spring has finally arrived when the delicate fiddlehead shaped tops of certain species of ferns poke up in the woods. Fiddleheads were traditionally steamed, sauteed with butter, or simply creamed. In restaurants, they might be combined with mushrooms for a spring rag out, as they are at Mary's at Baldwin Creek in Bristol, or married with perfectly seared scallops and other tender cusp of spring vegetables by the James Beard Foundation Award nominated team at Misery Loves Company Restaurant in Wanooski. Wow, so uh, that's pretty good. They, they do have a very interesting uh, palette of food, I would say. So that's a fiddlehead. If you're ever in Vermont, make sure to uh, don't skimp on the fiddlehead. So uh, we went over some of the cheese. Have any of you ever heard of Farmstead cheese? Uh, with re-owned owner Jasper Hill Farm up to the Northeast Kingdom to Vermont Shepherd down to Westminster West, Vermont claims the highest number of cheesemakers per capita, close to 50 at last count. Many craft cheese with the milk of their own animals so you guys heard of craft beer, this is craft cheese. Many craft cheese with the milk of their own animals, which makes them farmstead cheesemakers. The Vermont Cheese Council offers a map of cheesemakers with visiting information. The repeat James Beard nominated Hen of the Wood restaurants in both Waterbury and Burlington compose exquisite local cheese plates. In Battleboro, try the port, chocolate, and cheese plate at Duo Restaurant. Okay, so that's farmstead cheese. Um, so they, they do not have an ocean in Vermont, but they do have a large lake. Uh, so in that lake, a very popular dish, a very popular fish, I should say, is perch. Lake perch is a very popular food in Vermont. And uh, there is a long history of fishing in around Lake Champlain. In winter, small ice fishing huts sprout on its surface. Since 1951, family-owned Ray Seafood has bought buckets of yellow perch and other lake fish from local anglers. At the family's Essex Junction location, they serve the hall as excellent fried perch fillets in a light, crunchy batter. Ray's also wholesales to other restaurants like Blue Northeast Seafood in Burlington, where the fried perch sandwich comes with spicy slaw and Old Bay aloe oil. 
The preparation makes it easy to taste why lake perch have been called poor man's shrimp. So perch is something that's like the most common fish. I remember uh, the few times I've been fishing in my life, uh, the one fish I caught was a perch. So up next we have gravy fries. These look delicious. Uh, gravy fries, according to foodnetwork.com, uh, before every Vermont restaurant jumped on the poutine bandwagon inspired by our friends in Canada, there were gravy fries at a place called Nectar's, a late night Burlington destination since 1975. It earned fame hosting the first gigs of Fish. Fish is a popular band uh, from Vermont, spelt P-H-I-S-H. Uh, which honored original owner Nectar Norris by naming its first major label alber, album after him. Gravy fries have never pretended to be high cuisine, but piles of crisp fries under homemade turkey gravy are still a solid way to fuel a night out. That's how you do it. You gotta have the turkey gravy, not beef gravy or chicken gravy, turkey gravy with the fries. All right, up next, we have uh, something that I've never heard of, but uh, it's a popular drink. Maybe Countryman knows a little bit about it. Uh, this is called Switchel. Now, during the heat of summer haymaking season, hay being the top agricultural crop, uh, Vermont farm wives mix up a thirst-quenching, rehydrating drink made with cider, vinegar, maple, molasses, and ginger. Cabot-based Vermont oh, Switchel yeah. Company Said. bottles the refreshing yeah, beverage inspired by a seventh generation family recipe selling it nationwide while not the original intent switchel makes a great cocktail mixer as shown by the success of a drink dubbed switchel in the rye served seasonally at the burlington tasting room at mad river distillers where they combine vermont switchel with jasmine simple syrup and their own locally made rye whiskey interesting all right, up next, this looks delicious. Uh, I've never had a Switchel. I'd really like to try one, though. And uh, also, I'd love to have a slice of maple cream pie. Mm -hmm. Made with the family's own dark syrup and a flaky lard and butter crust, according to Kate McDonald Beetle's original recipe, the maple cream pie at the Creamery restaurant has not changed in nearly half a century. In fact, Bee Tree herself made the pies, topping slices of rich maple sweetened custard with freshly whipped cream until she was in her early 90s. One of her daughters is the current pie maker for the family owned That's restaurant, nice. which serves yes. homey fare in an 1891 building that was, really that was once the local creamery. Another fine example of maple cream pie can be found at the P&H truck stop in Wells River. Wow, it, it looks good. I like um, pumpkin pie a lot. So up next we have uh, ramps. And ramps uh, seem to be really popular among, um, among many states. Uh, they don't have them in Texas and they don't have them in Hawaii. Uh, but ramps, among the earliest edible grains to sprout through the frosty Vermont soil are ramps or wild leeks as they're sometimes called. They are as eagerly anticipated by chefs today as they were welcomed by native Abenaki. Resembling scallions with an increasingly pungent bite as they mature, ramps are suited to various spring preparations, including pickling and grilling. On restaurant menus, they might punctuate a dish like the braised oxtail stuffed squid with strong radishes and grilled ramp aoi. Served at the James Beard Foundation award-nominated Solo Farm and Table in South Londonderry, or you might find them staring at the ramp in the potato salad with ramp dumplings at Ariel's Restaurant in Brookfield, Vermont. All right, up next, uh, we talked about apples. Uh, Vermont grows a lot of heirloom apples, um, more than just about any state in the United States, other than Washington, I believe. So, uh, what do I know about these heirloom apples? Well, according to foodnetwork.com, uh, Vermont state fruit, the apple, is deeply rooted back to when every homestead had a few apple trees. Scott Farm in Dummerstown is known for his diversity of heirloom apples, including Thomas Jefferson's two actual favorite varieties. Interesting. A Poss Spittensburg apple and Maiden's Blush, which are particularly suited to drying. 
Every fall, the orchard hosts an heirloom apple dinner featuring dishes like rabbits stuffed with Baldwin apples, bacon and chard. The James Beard-nominated team at Kitchen Table Bistro in Richmond showcases heirloom apples on the fall menu and preparations like slow-roasted rack of pork with squash, squash risotto and an apple relish, as well as grandmother's apple cake with a sweet brown sugar custard dessert. All right, that's uh, that sounds good. I'm not a big fan of apples, but I mean, I love, they make it sound good, you know. Okay, up next we have uh, the gill feather turnip. Now, this is similar to another dish. I don't I don't know exactly what this is, but according to FoodNetwork.com, uh, it's recently named the Vermont State Vegetable, the heirloom turnip turnip. The heirloom turnip variety is sweeter than most, likely due to some rutabaga influence in its ancestral line. And the town of Wardsboro honors the humble root with a whole festival every October. There you can fill up a tray with everything from gill feather turnip soup to surprisingly good donuts made from turnips. Seasonally, the four columns in in a nearby new fane features gill feathers in the form of a velvety bisque or maybe in a rich grain layered with grafton cheddar and local cream. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So I talked about pickled eggs. Look how uh, the color of this egg here is so it's crazy. So this is a bunch of pickled stuff in this picture, but you see the eggs like neon yellow. Pickled eggs. To get through the long winter, Vermonters usually used to can and pickle everything they could fit in the jars, including cucumber tongue pickles, I've had those, made from overgrown cucumbers, the round ends resembling tongues, fruit and even eggs. Uh, large jars of pickled eggs can be found sitting on some general store and deli counters, including the one at Gill's Delicatessen in Rutland, where they make their own vinegar garlic version. Restaurant chefs have also taken to pickled eggs in creative ways, including a turmeric tinted one served on the house made pickle plates at Hired Hand Brewing Company in Virginia's. So, the reason the egg is that color is because of turmeric, which is very healthy. Have any of you ever had a pickled egg before? I know I haven't. I've seen them for sale though. So up next we have sugar on snow. Vermont leads the nation. So Vermont leads the nation in snow, but they also lead the nation in maple syrup production. The natural sweetener flows through the menu of every type. So they, they pour syrup over everything. It's poured over fabled pecan pumpkin pancakes at the Blue Bin Diner in Bennington and mixed into cocktails like the Cayenne Maple Spiced Margarita at Popolo. Yeah. Hmm. For the purest taste, head to the sugar house of a producer like Morse Farm and Montpelier, where maple sap is boiled into syrup. During sugaring season, a traditional treat is fresh syrup ladled on snow to set up like taffy, often with a pickle and plain donut. So, countryman, um, do you actually eat the snow too? Uh, I mean, the sugar, <laughs> or do you just use that to, as a plate? Oh, interesting. Okay, well, uh, you know, to each their own, to each their own. Okay, up next is something that um, yeah, that's real popular in Texas too, uh, and that's maple baked beans. Yummy. Uh, for a true Vermont experience, head to the town of Georgia, where one family has been baking Vermont yellow eye beans with their own maple syrup, slab bacon, and yellow mustard for more than 50 years. Run for years by the J sisters, June, Jolly, and Geraldine, Center Market is now operated by their great-grandnephew. Every week, the team sells up to 16 pounds of beans from the deli in their freezer. For maple baked beans with table service, try the Chelsea Royal Diner in West Brattleboro, where diner classics get a fresh local vore twist and the beans feature local syrup and their own diner raised pork. Wow, that, uh, that sounds pretty good. 
So I've had that a lot, maple baked beans. That's a very common dish, like I said, in Texas. Uh, but this next thing, I don't, I don't know what this is. Interesting. Wow, that sounds actually pretty good. It's like a, like a piece of candy. I like that. So uh, next up, we have tortier. Uh, French Canadian immigrants bought, brought many recipes to Vermont, uh, but Quebec Coise meat pie called Tortier stands out. Families baked dozens for end of the year celebrations that lasted through the night. The two crusted prop pies are usually filled with ground beef and pork, onions, mashed potatoes, cinnamon, and cloves. Quality Bake Shop in Essex Junction has made them for more than 30 years based on a family recipe. So, Countryman, have you ever uh, had this tortier? Am I pronouncing that correctly? Tortier? As I guess it's a, uh, it's like a main dish. Countryman said, never had that either, and yeah. Okay, so up next we have cider donuts. So, ripe apples lure crowds to Vermont orchards every fall, but the freshly fried cider donuts many offer are equally compelling, if not quite as healthy. The tender cake donuts are made with apple cider in the dough, then usually rolled in cinnamon sugar hot out of the fryer. During apple season, fans go straight to the source, like Shelbourne Orchards in Shelbourne or Champlain Orchards in Shoreham. Year-round, head to Cold Holler cedar, Cider Mill in Waterbury or indulge in the excellent mini cider donuts fried fresh three times a week at Adesori Four Corners General Store. All right, so I've never had a uh, cider donut, but uh, I, I, would, I wouldn't mind trying one. You know, I'm not that big a fan of apples or donuts even, but that sounds good. This uh, is more my cup of tea or cup of ice cream, I should say. Uh, this is the Ben & Jerry's Vermonster. So Ben & Jerry's, you know, was founded in 1878 in an old Burlington gas station. Ben & Jerry's grew into Vermont's most famous food brand after Ben Cohen and Jerry Greenfield first mixed big chunks of candy and cookies into their own ice cream. The company is now owned by Univeller, but stays firmly rooted in Vermont. Flavors like chocolate chip cookie dough and Cherry Garcia are legendary, and the Waterbury Factory Tour is the state's number one tourist attraction. If you dare, order the Vermonster Sunday made with 20 scoops of ice cream, fudge brownies, bananas, cookies, choice of toppings, hot fudge, whipped cream, and marshmallows. I think I could take that. <laughs> so, oh man, if you're gonna go to Vermont, you gotta go on the Ben & Jerry's tour at the Ben & Jerry's factory, right? I do flavor Ben & Jerry's flavors. Chocolate therapy and half eight. Half eight has like brownies in it, it's amazing. Yeah, I've had half-baked. Uh, I have my own idea for a Ben & Jerry's flavor if I ever get the chance to make one. So up next we have heirloom corn. Now heirloom corn is sweet, fresh-packed corn gets all the glory. But it was corn cultivated for drying that sustained the native Abenaki people who first settled in the region we now call Vermont. So this is an ancient dish made by the very first native tribes in Vermont. Old heirloom varieties like one called Callus Flint Corn, saved by farmers Roy and Ruth Fair of North Callus, have made a resurgence. Vermont cornmeal shows up on restaurant menus throughout the state, including Black Crim's Tavern's Jalapeno Cornbread, with pickled sweet peppers and pork belly made with corn raised and milled in Randolph, the same town as the restaurant. So that looks okay. Uh, it's interesting that that's the, the, what the Native Americans used to eat. Uh, that goes back all the way to the um, 12th and 13th century. Said, oh yeah. So up next we have lamb. You guys like lamb? Who doesn't like lamb? Most people associate Vermont with cows, but in the 1800s the hillsides were dominated by sheep, raised largely for wool, and Vermonters still eat more Don't lamb per capita than Set. most Americans. The beautiful restaurant overlooking Keiichi's Covered Bridge at Simon's Pierce Glass and Pottery Workshop offers a fine local lamb burger served with a mint and Vermont Set. feta salad. 
Will you be talking about the flood of nineteen? At Shelbourne Farms. I, I, no, I didn't know about that. At Sh we'll, we'll ask Google about it in a second. At Shelbourne Farms, the striking natural historic landmark and home to a working farm and environmental education nonprofit, the seasonal restaurant features lamb raised on site and dishes like slow roasted Thank lamb shanks with chive blossom gremolata. So doesn't that look great? I mean, it, it looks like it has confetti on it. I mean, I would love to eat that. It looks like a party in my mouth. All right, up next we have salt port and milk gravy. Milk gravy. Uh, does that sound familiar, countrymen? Salt pork and milk gravy? Well, according to foodnetwork.com, salt pork is another throwback to traditional food preservation. When farm pigs were processed in the fall, some of the fatty pork belly would have been salted and stored in a barrel down That's cellar to last through the winter. The Thursday special at the Wayside Restaurant, a landmark for the honest Yankee fare for almost a century, is crunchy, peppery fried strips of salt pork with a thick, mild milk gravy. The dish has even been recognized in the Culinary Hall of Fame by the Turnbridge World's Fair, which takes place every September. So that's another food that they, uh, they used to uh, make to get them through the winter. I'm into food preservation. I think that's something important that everybody should know how to do. All right, so we just have a couple more foods here. Uh, next up, we have venison. Vermont's blazing hillsides of fall foliage are matched by the blazing orange of hunters' vests. At seasonal community game suppers, like the one hosted by the Bradford Church of Christ each November, dishes might include bear stew or beaver meatballs. But restaurant beaver balls, yuck. But restaurants favor venison when it comes to representing the state's deep hunting culture. So it used to be really easy to own, uh, side note, it used to be really easy to own guns in Vermont. They used to be very pro Second Amendment. That all recently changed within the last 10 or 20 years. But continuing on, uh, chefs mostly use farm raised meat through state regulations, do permit wild game within a window around deer hunting season. Try the award smoky sweet venison chili at the lobby in Middlebury. When you hear about venison class, venison chili is one of the uh, things you hear about the most. And when you hear about food in Vermont, uh, one of the uh, most popular things you hear said you should try venison jerky, Gene. Is the venison jerky, I've heard of that too. Uh, but the maple creamies is what uh, Vermont's really known for. And if you look at the picture there, um, <clears throat> it's really interesting. Let's see what it says here on the foodnetwork.com. Uh, it says the correct spelling is almost as controversial as the source. But everyone can agree that Vermont's version of soft serve ice cream uh, made with real maple syrup is the state's top frosty treat. Some prefer sugar makers like Morse Farm, Bragg Farm, Montepelier Farm, or Palmer Late Maple in Jericho, where they make real maple sprinkles too. Others swear by seasonal snack bars or stands like Maynard's in Moortown or legendary maple and ice cream in Williamston. Newcomer standout Canteen Creamy Company in Waitsfield offers Maple Madness Sunday crowned with maple cotton candy and maple crystals. Wow. This farm is a big one too. Very famous. So that's maple cotton candy with maple crystals. Uh, let's see what Google says about this. Hey Google, what's a maple creamy? Here's a summary from the website atlasobscura.com. When it comes to featuring local products, Vermont has it made with the maple creamy, a swirling tower of maple flavored soft syrup piled high upon a sugar or waffle cone. The creamy is the product of Vermont's robust dairy and maple syrup industries. Hey Google, volume 10. Hey Google, can you repeat that? Sure. Here's a summary from the website atlasobscura.com. When it comes to featuring local products, Vermont has it made with the maple creamy, a swirling tower of maple flavored soft syrup piled high upon a sugar or waffle cone. The creamy is the product of Vermont's robust dairy and maple syrup industries. Oh, okay. Thanks, Google. All right, so uh, that's a maple cream. We just have one or two more food things up. Up next, we have boiled cider. Uh, boiled cider. Never had it before. I, I wouldn't picture it like that. 
But uh, since 1882, the Wood family in Weathersfield had simmered its own fresh-pressed cider down into tart, sweet, boiled cider syrup. Cooked even further, it becomes cider jelly. The family's cider press dates all the way back to the 1880s, creating a scene so historically compelling that parts of the Cider House Rules movie were actually filmed there. Boiled cider was originally a preservation technique, but today it's prized as a way to add depth to baked goods. The cider vinaigrette drizzled over a salad of kale, salami, sliced apple, and charred onions, served at Okimo Mountain's Epic Restaurant, and the Woods Boiled Cider Whole Grain Loaf Baked Weekly at King Arthur Flower Bakery and Cafe in Norwich will be some of your top picks. All right, up next we have craft beer. Vermont is known for its craft beer. If you're in Vermont, never hand somebody a Budweiser or they won't ever be your friend. So craft beer. Historically, Vermonters made sap beer using maple tree sap. Now brewed seasonally by Fiddlehead Brewing and Lawson's yeah. Finest Liquids. Said. But more yeah, recently, yeah, said, yeah. the state has built a global reputation for craft beer. Beer pilgrims flock to Hill Farmstead Brewery in Greensboro uh, and the, uh, called The Alchemist, brewer of fabled Hetty Topper, along with dozens of other famous bubbling up around the state. For beer-influenced eats like rich cheddar and lager soup or beer-marinated beer steak, along with the house brews, try the Trapp Family Lodge, and remember, guys, the Von Trapp family, they're located in, uh, they, they moved to Vermont. So the Trapp Family Lodge uh, on the picturesque Stowe property founded in 1950 by the Von Trapps from The Sound of Music and still run by the family. Wow, that's cool. So once again, the uh, Sound of Music comes up in today's lecture. All right, up next, we have uh, last... I think there's one or two more up to this one, uh, foods. This, yeah, there's one more up to this. So we have spring dug parsnips. Before supermarkets stocked tomatoes year-round, Vermonters endeared months of limp root cellar vegetables until the ground thawed enough to unearth cold, sweet, and crisp spring dug parsnips. When the snow melted and people began to dig the parsnips, let freedom ring, wrote Lewis Kent, a.k.a. Mrs. Appleyard, an authority on Vermont cooking. Chefs around the state take advantage of the sweetness in creative ways. At the downtown grocery in Ludlow, spring dud parsnips might be used to broth, to both a flavor of milky broth and add earthy crunch as garnishes for handmade lobster ravioli, like you can see in the picture, with spring peas and house-grown pea grinders. Wow, lobster ravioli, I've only had that once. All right, last and uh, certainly not least, we have cider hard and sweet. Before prohibition, hard cider was the beverage of choice, a way to preserve fresh cider and safer to drink than water. But many orchards, like Dwight Miller Orchards and Dummerstown Press, their own sweet cider. But hard cider has also staged a comeback. There is also ice cider fermented from frozen cider into a sweet tart dessert wine. The Northeast Kingdom Tasting Center is home to Newport Cider House Bar and Grill and to Eden Specialty Ciders, so, Hard Cidery and Tasting Bar. Along with hard ciders on tap, menus special might include apple and shallot crust steak with a cider whiskey sauce, as well as spiced apple cheesecake with cider bourbon salted caramel. Wow, interesting. So, uh, Countryman has uh, something he'd like to add. Go ahead, Countryman. We're going to change the screen. All right, so uh, whenever Countryman wants to add. So those are some famous countryman foods of said, Vermont. Three other things that are super popular in the really small towns are cream bars, fried chicken joints, and sandwich cafes. The one cream bar I used to go to all the time was in my old town, Bethel, Vermont. It is called Cockadoodle Pizza Cafe. You can look it up online too. It's literally a night. Okay, I guess they could cut off, feel me. 
Let me, let me go ahead and read it another way then. Three other things that are super... Oh, shit. Your PC ran into a problem and needs to restart. <clears throat> so yeah, um, as you guys can see in the chat. Uh, hey Google, what are creamy bars? Sorry, I don't have any information about that. Okay. So, uh, let me go ahead and I'll, I'll read the uh, comment over here. So a 1940s cream bar with the bar itself with old time sodas uh, too, like orange. Oh, like the old time orange soda. That's nice. Like a, uh, like a, a soda Third. jerk, a soda phone. Help Mr. G with a donation through Stream Elements. HTTPS colon slash slash Stream Elements dot com slash MRG underscore live slash tip. So it also says, uh, you can look it up online. It's literally the 1940s cream bar with the bar itself with old time sodas like orange along with tables. They serve sandwiches and pizzas. It's one of the coolest places I've ever seen. It's called Cockadoodle Pizza Cafe. Interesting. So there's a famous hurricane that went through Vermont that somebody mentioned in the chat uh, that I haven't mentioned uh, at all during the lecture. Uh, Hurricane Irene, if that's correct. Uh, hey Google, tell us about Hurricane Irene. According to Wikipedia, Hurricane Irene was a large and destructive tropical cyclone which affected much of the Caribbean and east coast of the United States during late August 2011. Uh, hey Google, did um, Hurricane Irene impact Vermont? On the website InsideClimateNews.org, they say, Irene dumped as much as 11 inches of rain on parts of Vermont and caused $733 million in damage. Seven. Well, it checked in at $14.3 billion, the sixth costliest hurricane in American history. Wow, did you guys hear that? Uh, this Hurricane Irene, uh, which touched down in Vermont, uh, which isn't known for its hurricanes, uh, was one of the most costly storms in United States history. Something you don't really hear about, uh, but with so many uh, people living on the eastern seaboard, uh, uh, you know, if a hurricane goes up there, they're rare. You know, you don't hear about hurricanes going up that far north. Uh, you know, normally hurricanes like warm weather. Um, but, you know, if they do get up there, you know, New York City could have a hurricane someday. It's possible. It's not even possible. It's going to happen someday. You know, there's going to be a huge earthquake in California. Hey, don't get mad at the messenger. Within the next 50 years, there's going to be a, the most traumatic earthquake in California has ever seen, that the, the world has ever seen. It's going to be like off the charts on the risk or skill. Said, in our lifetime. Picture a tiny stream that you knew your whole life that wouldn't get a yard in width or over a foot in depth. Then it becoming 20 yards wide and 8 feet deep. That's what happened. Wow. Yeah, flooding is the most underrated natural disaster. Uh, flooding is responsible for more deaths uh, than uh, earthquakes. Many places don't have her earthquakes and hurricanes as well. Uh, every place has flooding. It can flood anywhere. Um, so, you know, it's important turn around, don't drown. You know, if you're going to remember something, you know, instead of, who are you going to call? Ghostbusters! Remember, turn around, don't drown. Because you've seen uh, so many terrible stories where you think your vehicle can make it, and you get stuck in that water, Three and, uh, you know, before Third. you know it, the water's filling up, and you're immersed. Slash merch dot stream elements slash mrg underscore live. So, uh, this was the first class of the month. The month's still not fully recovered from Irene. They're still rebuilding stuff today. Shout out to Irene. <laughs> that good friend of mine, Irene, not the hurricane. Um, but yeah, today was the first uh, class of the month. You know, I've been really busy this month. Uh, I'm trying to, I, I am getting things together uh, <clears throat> for different plans that I have this month. And then we also had a... Uh, a loss to somebody very close to me at the beginning of the month as well. Uh, but it was fun to get back into the swing of things and start teaching again. Uh, I really appreciate um, everybody that's helped out today, uh, especially uh, Mrs. J and Countryman. Uh, shout out to anybody watching this on YouTube. If you're from Vermont, if you know about Vermont, uh, leave something in the comments and uh, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, a thumbs up as well. And share this video as well. Um, I do this I'm going to start doing this a few times a week, uh, every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I think. Uh, Monday and Fridays, I'm going to save for uh, working on the stock market and doing different uh, stock trading uh, live on YouTube. 
Uh, but I'll stick with these classes on Twitch for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, three days a week. We've already been through about 35 states, I believe. So we're almost through all 50 states, 15 more states, and we'll have completed the entire continental United States. Um, if you're looking for your own state and you're watching this on YouTube, check the playlist at the end of this video and check out your own state. Obviously, the first few states I did, they weren't as an elaborate of a presentation. You didn't get a huge slideshow with all the famous foods and famous people. We still need to do that. I'll do that real quick before we go. Uh, but they obviously, everything progresses with me. You know, there's a learning curve, but once I pass that curve, I usually go right in the right direction if it's something I'm interested in and something I care about. If I'm building birdhouses, I could never succeed at that. But teaching, yes, something I could succeed at. Putting together a presentation, yes, something I could succeed at. Trading stocks and learning about the stock market, also something I can succeed at. So uh, I appreciate all you guys. Uh, we're not ending it just yet here. So got a little bit more, I'm going to show you the state capital of Vermont and uh, just a few famous people from Vermont. So, uh, continuing on uh, with this great presentation here, uh, famous people from Vermont. We mentioned Bernie Sanders, of course. He's actually from New York, but, uh, you know, uh, Ben and Jerry's, they are from Burlington, Vermont. Uh, famous gold medalist snowboarder, Hannah Teller. Uh, snowboarding super popular in Vermont. Also, uh, Calvin Coolidge president from Vermont. There's one other president from Vermont. I don't remember what their, who it is. Hey Google, what presidents were born in Vermont? On the website Vermont.gov, they say, Arthur is a boy in Vermont and his rise to president of the United States. Do you want a little more context? Yes. Arthur. Chester A. Chester Arthur. Arthur. The exhibit yes. panels examine the life and career of the 21st president of the United States who was born in Vermont on October 5th, 1829. Okay, so Chester Arthur was born in Vermont, but also Calvin Coolidge. Hey Google, who was Calvin Coolidge? According to Wikipedia, Calvin Coolidge was an American politician and lawyer who served as the 30th President of the United States from 1923 to 1929. A Republican lawyer from New England, born in Vermont, Coolidge worked his way up the ladder of Massachusetts state politics, eventually becoming governor of Massachusetts. Okay, so Calvin Coolidge from Vermont, also from Vermont, the one great Robert Frost. I took the road less traveled and made all the difference in the mother effing world. Am I right or am I right, guys? Take the road less traveled. Don't be a simp. Don't be a, an average Country person. Man. Dead. I love Frost. So, uh, hey Google, tell the class about, about Robert Frost. He has one of my favorites. I found four on the website Britannica.com. Life. Here are the first three. Robert Frost was born in 1874, and he died in 1963 at the age of 88. Elliot was born in 1896 and died of cholera hey, in Google. 1900. Tell, tell me about Roger, Robert Frost. According to Wikipedia, Robert Lee Frost was an American poet. His work was initially published in England My before boss. it was published in the Dead. United States. Oh, Mr. G, hey Google, what is Robert Frost's most famous poem? Poems frequently mentioned on the web include The Road Not Taken, Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening, Fire and Ice, and others. All right, interesting. <clears throat> All right, so Robert Frost, The Road Less Traveled. Hey, Google, play the poem Robert Frost, Road Less Traveled. Playing Robert Frost on Pandora. Sorry, something went wrong. When you're ready, give it another try. All right, class, uh, I'm going to play Robert Frost, The Road Less Traveled. Or, excuse me, Road Not Taken. This is a poem, uh, The Road Not Taken, by Robert Frost. Sorry. Oh, nice. 
with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. about life not just taken literally it's such a good piece of literature one of the best ever written you're right it's very beautiful thank you everybody uh this is a wonderful stream today uh, a really great ending there with the wonderful poem by robert frost uh that really uh touched my heart there. I really enjoy doing this. I love teaching. I love you guys coming here. Uh, you guys are always welcome here. Join the Mr. G live stream Instagram. It's on the screen right now. Share this class with somebody and uh, you know we're going to do this Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Thanks everybody for coming. I, I love all you guys. Thank you Mrs. J. Thank you Big Block. Thank you Lita. Thank you Bella. Uh, thank you Countryman. This is really a great stream and we'll be back tomorrow in another class. Said. Thanks again, everybody. Oh, yeah, thanks. And uh, this video is everybody take care of the ones the you love.